Thanks very much, Mindy. Well, emission data is uh, the ultimate goal of this work. Concentration data plays a, an integral part in those emission estimations. But concentration data also addresses a lot of the questions and concerns that were raised by the advisory, our grant advisory group, about the barn environment for their cattle workers and, and themselves. So with part two of this presentation, what I want to do is share the concentration data for ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and methane based on temperature and time of day. Before I get into the concentration data, though, I wanted to share some graphs of the, the temperature conditions uh, for our monitoring period with this project. This was a two-year monitoring period, and uh, with, with our region in the upper, upper Great Plains, we had a pretty large temperature range um, within the course of a year for, for our South Dakota sites, our two South Dakota sites. Our temperature ranged from minus 20 to plus 30 degrees Celsius, about minus 5 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of a year, and then, of course, we measured over two years. Also wanted to point out that we measured both ambient conditions or the outdoor conditions at the weather tower and then in the barn, and we saw very little difference between those two measurements, uh, meaning there wasn't a lot of, of temperature lift within the barn relative to outside, especially during winter. We did not go alternate between our different sites, uh, one trailer going between these two South Dakota sites, and you can um, hopefully see from the graph that, that our monitoring periods were, were interspersed over those two years between the two barns. And then we had we have similar temperature conditions and then that um, similar variation or alternation between the two sites in, um, in Iowa. So we have, uh, we collected data over a wide range of temperature conditions uh, at all our four sites to look at the influence of of temperature on the, on the exhaust gas, gas concentrations from these barns, we took this approach. We, we grouped, for example, all the hourly means for, our, for H2S concentrations at a particular site um, when, that we measured when the corresponding air temperature was, let's say, 0 to 5 degrees Celsius. So for our four sites, we have um, the averages um, presented here for this temperature bin. And for H2S, with these four sites, these concentration means ranged between about 0 and 70 parts per billion. As the temperature increased, on average, with all four sites, we did see uh, an increase in, in the concentration. This increase is more apparent, and, and the averages are obviously higher, in the pack barns, which are shown with the, the blue lines, compared to the, bar, um, to the scraped or scrape and haul systems, shown in the red. So while we see in this particular uh, graph considerably higher hydrogen sulfide um, concentrations in the, in the pack barns, and we see that there is gas production occurring, I do want to emphasize that these concentrations that we, that were, that we found aren't, are nowhere near uh, occupational safety health or, or NIOSH exposure limits. Um, we, see, we see different um, we see influence of temperature on these gas concentrations, but the levels are still relatively low. When we look at the relationship of, our, of the ammonia concentrations in these barns, and this is in parts per billion, um, the influence of temperature is not as clear cut. The bed pack, bedded pack barns, shown in the, in the blue, have more of a tendency to increase with temperature. And again, our temperature range was from about minus um, 25 degrees Celsius, upwards of 30 degrees Celsius, we see more of a tendency for the concentrations in those pack, barn, pack barns to increase. Whereas with the scrape and haul type system, shown in the red, the concentrations are a little bit more stable. This makes sense um, with um, what, we, what we understand to happen with ammonia production in these barns. With the scrape and haul system, where we're continually removing the manure from these barns on a, on a weekly basis, um, there is going to be less variability in that production. Whereas with the bedded pack barns, um, we are going to have a, a larger um, buildup or pot of manure or pot of, of nitrogen to be, to be released over time. So uh, may, uh, this relationship with temperature, um, while not as strong as it is with H2S, 
um, does does make sense with with what we know about ammonia production. Again, the concentrations that um, we're showing here for ammonia uh, range from about 0.5 parts per parts per million or, or 500 parts per billion upwards of uh, 4,500 parts per billion or 4.5 parts per million. And again, these are well below um, NIOSH and OSHA worker exposure limits. With methane, we actually see some, some slightly different results. There's a tendency for the methane concentration in these barns to decrease with increasing temperature. I saw that in three barns, um, the exception being one of our bedded pack barns. This change with temperature, though, for all the barns is a maximum of five to six parts per million. Again, the overall levels do not raise um, any immediate concerns. Methane is produced by the manure, but also by enteric fermentation by the animals. Um, so we would expect the, the methane production to increase um, with increasing temperature from the manure. But with the enteric methane, as the, as the temperature increases, we expect the, the cattle feed intake to decrease, and, and therefore the enteric methane to decrease with hotter weather. So we, we feel that this decreasing trend in the methane data for the majority of these barns is uh, is an influence of that, that feed intake and enteric methane production. So I, we just talked about the influence of, of temperature on our, on our concentrations within the barns. One of the advisory group members um, was especially curious about time of day impacts on gas concentrations. His, uh, his observation or, or feeling was that within his barn, which was a, um, within his barn, that the gas levels increased in the morning as the animals were getting up. Was that because they were getting up off the pack and there was this release of, of gas from under the animals? Or was it related to something else? So we, in the next three graphs, what I'm going to show is um, our average concentrations. Instead of grouping them by temperature, what I've done here is the concentrations are grouped based on hour of day. So for each of the four systems, for example, at 4 in the morning, um, these were, this was our average H2S concentration. And similarly, at um, 8 o'clock at night or 20, 20, 100 hours, our average concentrations are shown here. So what we see is we do notice a peak in our, in our average at hydrogen sulfide concentrations around 7 or 8 in the morning, which does correspond with that feeding time. But we also notice another, another peak during the evening, again, which corresponds with a uh, a feeding time in these barns. So we see this, these two peaks corresponding with feeding times, and, and we also then relate that back to periods of, of animal activity. With increased animal activity, increased um, action on the bedded pack or with the manure, it makes sense that we would have some more gas production. We also tend to see an increase over the course of the day for all the sites, and that, that increase over the course of the day is more pronounced with our pack systems. We, would, we could relate that back to more um, urine and fecal deposition over the day and more gas production from that. But we could also, there's also that, that temperature impact or the increase in temperature over the course of the day that could be contributing to that increase. Again, these are changes that we've observed in the concentrations, and it's going to take a different type of analysis or modeling work to, to fully understand uh, which of these factors is driving these changes with with time of day or, or temperature, for example. With ammonia concentration, we, uh, the ammonia concentration exhibited similar peaks um, over the course of the day. Again, a peak in the morning around 8, eight o'clock and another peak around 8 o'clock in the evening. Makes sense. Again, we have increased animal activity at, during these feeding times, increased urine deposition, which would lead to increased ammonia production. Uh, interestingly, though, our average concentration levels were very similar between three of the barns, while the fourth was slightly higher. This difference is only about 3 ppm. With methane, again, we also see peaks happening in the morning and in the evening around feeding time. Again, we, would, uh, we assume this ties back to animal activity, uh, feeding activity, and then, of course, also rumination. 
again, we have three barns that are exhibiting very similar exhibited very similar concentrations, whereas one was slightly lower, but only by a difference of about two parts per million. I took, um, I wanted to share the, the very crude average concentrations that we measured at each of these four sites for these three gases, um, just to uh, just to demonstrate that, well, um, manure management had a considerable impact on hydrogen sulfide, bedded pack systems having um, higher concentrations, especially during warmer weather than, um, than our scrape barn systems. If we look at ammonia, it's actually, it is again one of the bedded pack systems that has the highest concentration, but when with methane, it's one of our scrape systems that has the highest concentration. So when using uh, this type of information from this type of study on um, gas production, it's really nice when you can look at the impact of manure management or temperature or other impacts on more than one gas, because we see that uh, the gases behave slightly differently for, for um, over the same type of period, um, very similar um, types of systems, just some, some differences with manure management. So when you use this information, it really comes down to what are your air quality priorities in, in if you're trying to address, address an issue. So the conclusions from this study of concentrations are that in general, the gas concentrations that we measured in these barns were, were well below workplace thresholds. And while we, we did see some temperature impact, that temperature impact was most pronounced for hydrogen sulfide con concentrations in the bedded pack barns. We saw daily variation in our ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and methane concentrations. And we um, would relate that daily variation back to changes in animal activity over the course of the day. Finally, we saw that the manure management system effect did differ uh, between gases. 